You'll have to excuse me. I'm quite worried about this if they've given me the floor because I really don't know anything about public speaking. But what I'm trying to do is I tried to sell my spot, but nobody would buy it. I tried to give it away, but uh, nobody wanted to do that either, so I got no choice. I belong to uh, Canarias Forestal. I'm an administrator. My name is Salvador Dorta. Uh, this is one of the, gr the companies in the Dorta group. What we do, I'm going to do all this from memory, because I've got to go back in time, which you can see, because we've been around for quite a long time. I'm not going to give you specific facts and figures, but rather tell you how we've done what we've done. I had a, a marketing teacher who always said, don't forget, don't ever forget that when you're going to sell something, sell the advantages, not the disadvantages. And obviously, I haven't come in here to sell anything. I'm going to talk about both sides of the coin. We started back in the 80s when people started working with pallets. This changed the way we were taking the crates out by hand and loading them on the ships. So we started working with pallets. So we set up a small company manufacturing pallets for bananas and even for tomatoes. At that time, the, it was the shipping agents that decided on the the workload, and we were working for the shipping aid agents. They'd come to their cooperatives, they would tell us, the, the, they'd give us the voucher and we'd make the pallets. But this grew and grew, and then one day, we brought the wood from Portugal, from Galicia. Then one day, somebody from the government advised us, if you like, or that's what I'll call it. He said there was enough material here to work on the wood, and we needed to work on it, that was, but above, uh, what we had to do is to repair the, um, the, the woodlands on the mountains. So we thought about this a little bit, or without thinking about it too much, we got into all of this, and we started working on the, the forests. The first surprise we came across was that 50% of the, of the forestry um, waste is vegetable material. So we brought it down to a sawmill that we made, and the same thing happened, that 50% of that wood was also um, reject, reject fraction of the, of the waste. So how can we can solve this? By using our imagination. So we had a farm in the south of the country, in Guia de Sora. So we put livestock in there. And we used it as bedding, and then the livestock people said that the, this bedding was quite good for them, and this was successful. In fact, overnight, the, the breeder would go up into the woods and ask for more material. We worked in the sawmill on the material for the pallets, so we needed more and more wood. It goes without saying that we would charter ships to bring in wood from La Palma. And in the last two years, we didn't have to import a single gram of wood. We did everything here. As we got excited about this, everything was working. So we set up more livestock farms, and we currently have about 100 cows and about 400 lambs for breeding. So we got into this, we registered it. The, the farm was a, an organic farm it, with 20 hectares that we have at between 250 and 400 meters above sea level. And the quality of the bananas that we grew was as good as or better than ones down on the coast. This was due to the fact that we were making compost, we made the manure, and we made the, the mulch. So we, the whole thing grew, 
and we used all the pruning waste from Arona, Andeje, and Azores, Santiago del Tede, all the hotels in the area, especially all the certified ones, the golf courses, et cetera, et cetera. To give you an idea, one figure I will give you, then we started working with the food industry that were facing a major problem. In food companies, we currently receive around 22 tons a day. And for pruning waste, it's around 15 and 22 trucks a day. We also do sorting for all the banana waste, tomato waste, when they had was, in short, everything the cooperatives in the area didn't have to shoot, uh, throw anything away. So, sometime later, at the end of the story, obviously, you get where you want to get. It was a long track that we travelled. We're registered in the trad as organic farmers for, and we have been for over 15 years. We manage all kinds of waste, especially plant and organic waste. We also have a compost plant that is totally legal, which is very difficult. It's difficult because no mayor wants a plant of this kind. It's the NIMBY factor. There's always somebody who's going to complain, and layers don't like that book. But we did manage to set it up properly, and we haven't had any problems because it's all been certified and legalized and authorized. The results, I would say, are magnificent with regard to bananas. We have the same averages as a coastal plantation. The sacrifice that we make is that we harvest them every month, every week, because the what we can't do is to leave our f the few customers that we have, we can't leave them a week without any bananas. This means that we're probably doing a little bit less, or the perf our performance is a little bit below par. Now we're, we're coming across the possibility of working with urban waste f from hotels and things like that. I think that, yes, it's... It's certainly viable, and it could even be a good idea, but if you've got to move the waste, it stinks. If we translate this into money, it means that if we do have to transport it, then it's not going to be quite so profitable. I'm not sure it's going to be profitable at all. We have experience, for instance, a five-star hotel that I've been, brought out a ton of organic waste from the kitchen and another five-star hotel there I made the same request and when you open the container when a hotel say this is perfect and the other one we had to sort all over there were sort of pieces of glass and spoons and everything in there in order to do this we need to raise awareness in the people that the waste has to be done properly and we need to I don't we're not quite sure how to do this maybe we should have a green police force because people really understand fines it's the only thing they do understand them from experience I have fine people who brought um, waste in poor conditions I said no I'm charging you 100 euros for that and this is a guarantee that they will never bring you poor quality waste again it always comes in good condition I'm not sure what the chances are of doing this in Granadilla. There's one thing I've always said, and I'll repeat it now. Compost is not difficult or easy. You can compost anything that's organic, whether it's easy or difficult. The difficult thing is to sell it. So if we're thinking in converting tons and tons into compost, first of all, we need to start by finding a market for it. Maybe the experts from the Island Council can start to help us in this. Especially the experts working in farming. I really don't know, but we need to do something. But we need to raise awareness to sort their, their waste 
properly. And that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. <laughs>